GPT-4 Vision has undoubtedly revolutionized multimodal AI, however, its closed source nature introduces limitations, like substantial costs, potential service disruptions, and data privacy concerns. As open source LMMs like CogVLM mature, they offer a valuable alternative for developers seeking more control over their projects. Today, I'll show you how to deploy CogVLM in inference server on AWS, keep your costs fairly low, and ensure complete data privacy. By the way, make sure to check out inference server GitHub project, as it can be used not only to deploy CogVLM, but pretty much any other computer vision model. CogVLM is currently the best open source alternative to GPT-4V as it rivals and even surpasses much larger closed source models like PalyX from Google. Its 17 billion parameter version is number one or number two on 14 different cross-model benchmarks. And quite recently, we wrote a blog post comparing CogVLM to other popular open source LMMs like Lava, as well as GPT-4 Vision, and it easily crushed any open source competition, performing fairly similarly to the model by OpenAI. The biggest downside of self-hosting large multimodal models like CogVLM is their size and the amount of memory that you need to have to deploy them. They very often require several A100 GPUs to do that. However, quite recently, CogVLM team released a 4-bit quantized version of the model that fits on a single NVIDIA T4 card. And that's the one that we are going to deploy today. Before we dive into setup instructions, let's take a quick peek at the hardware and software requirements. The main requirement is NVIDIA T4 GPU with 16 gigabytes of memory. We need 11 gigabytes to run 4-bit quantized version of CogVLM. You'll also need to ensure that your machine has at least CUDA 11.7 and Docker supporting NVIDIA runtime. Last but not least, allocate around 15 gigabytes of storage for Docker image and CogVLM weights with a little bit of space as a buffer. Now let's jump into AWS console and let me show you how to fire up and configure such a VM manually. If you're familiar with EC2, feel free to skip that section and jump straight into inference server configuration. We start in AWS console, select EC2, then navigate into instances tab and click launch an instance button. Now we need to provide the name of our instance. I'm just going with CogVLM server. As I said, we need CUDA 11.7 and NVIDIA Docker support. Of course, we could use Ubuntu image and configure those things on our own. However, it's a lot easier to use pre-made AMIs. We search for deep learning AMI GPU PyTorch and pick the first one from the top. Now it's time for instance type. As I mentioned on the slide, we need NVIDIA T4 GPU and you can find those in G4DN instances. We pick the smallest instance in that category. To finish inference server configuration, we will need to log into our machine using SSH and that will require an authentication key. Let's generate a new pair of keys right now. We just need to provide the name and select the key pair type. In my case, I am sticking with RSA and click create key pair. This will also download the public part of the key to my hard drive so I can use it later. To make things simple, I will allow all inbound SSH and HTTP traffic. And the last step is to increase the amount of storage. Let's increase it to 80 gigabytes just to be safe. And that's it. Our EC2 instance is up. Now it's time to log in and set up our CogVLM inference server. After logging in, we need to confirm that our instance has everything we need. First, we run NVIDIA SMI to confirm that we have access to GPU and check the CUDA version. Then we run Docker version and NVIDIA Docker version to confirm that the Docker is installed and we have access to NVIDIA runtime. And last but not least, we run Python version to confirm that the Python is installed because our next step is to set up our Python environment. We will need two Python packages, inference and inference CLI. I'm installing specific versions of both packages because at the time of recording, the feature is not officially out. However, I'm pretty sure that by the time you watch this video, you won't need any version specification. 
The installation might take a little bit of time, so let's use the magic of cinema to speed it up. Okay, all packages are installed. We should be able to use inference CLI now. Just to confirm, let's run inference dash dash help. Looks like everything works. Now we can run inference server start. Once again, this command might take a little bit of time to complete as inference server is pulling quite a large Docker image in the background. But once it's done, we can run Docker PS and we should be able to see a RoboFlow inference server container running. To make experimenting with CogVLM just a little bit easier, I created a small app that will deploy on the VM. It will allow us to upload images and type in prompts through the UI interface. To install the app, we clone GitHub repository. The link to the GitHub repo is in the description below. We go into the directory and run pip install dash r requirements txt. That should take just a few seconds to complete. To connect to the inference server, we will need to authenticate ourselves using RoboFlow API key. Let me show you how to get it. We go back to the browser, type in roboflow.com, click sign in, select the service that you would like to use to authenticate. And in a few seconds, we should be able to see our workspace. Then we click on the name, click settings, RoboFlow, RoboFlow API and copy the key. Now we are back in terminal and we can export our API key as the environment variable under RoboFlow API key name. And we are pretty much ready to run the app. The app is based on Gradio and it will generate a link that we can use to interact with our inference server from the browser. So I'm just copying and pasting the address. And after a few seconds, I see the app. I can pretty much upload an image, type in prompt. In this case, I'm asking it to read the serial number from the tire, press submit, and the request is going to be sent to our server. The first request might take several minutes to complete as in the background, we are downloading the weights of CogVLM. We can monitor that process using Docker system DF command. And then we need to load those weights into the memory. And this process can be monitored with NVIDIA SMI command. Our application probably timed out by the time uh, we loaded the model into the memory. So we can just refresh the app, upload the image once again, type in our prompt and run submit. And this time the inference should be significantly faster. And after a few seconds, we should get the response, which is our serial number. I can show you one more demo. This time we'll upload an image of the luggage lying on the tarmac uh, in the airport. And we will ask CogVLM, is there anything wrong with that image? Uh, run our query. And once again, after a few seconds, we should get our answer. Awesome. In today's video, I discuss the advantages of self-hosting CogVLM and walk you through the process of deployment on AWS. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'll try to be as helpful as possible. Also, if you are interested in multimodality, make sure to take a look at Multimodal Maestro, a library that I build that enhances the capabilities of LMMs. It allows you to go beyond basic tasks and explore advanced prompting techniques allowing you to perform language-driven object detection, instance segmentation, cross-image detection, stuff like that. That's all for today. It's awesome to be back on YouTube after a longer break. Make sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned for more computer vision content coming to this channel soon. My name is Peter and I see you next time. Bye.